Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing angiogenesis. So we're in the process now of discussing sprouting angiogenesis. So at the moment we've got this angiogenic centre uh, which is secreting this pro-angiogenic molecule and the most uh, famous mo pro-angiogenic molecule is vascular endothelial growth factor A. Okay, so and what we want to see is um, how is this going to affect these two capillaries? Well, basically what's going to happen is they're going to produce sprouts that will uh, migrate towards the source of vascular endothelial growth factor A. And then when the two sprouts arrive at the uh, source of vascular endothelial growth factor A, this so-called angiogenic center, they will then fuse together to make one uh, continuous blood vessel. Okay, right. So... What will happen is the vascular endothelial growth factor A will diffuse over to these endothelial cells and which endothelial cell is going to get the biggest dose of vascular endothelial growth factor A? Well, it's going to be this one here in this case and it's more difficult to say in this one. We'll go for, um, we'll have to go for, mm, no, actually, I'll, I'll say that it's this one just because it will make drawing the picture easier. Uh, but yes, it would look as though it was this one basically. Okay, so basically the first step is a process known as tip cell selection, okay? So basically when you produce a sprout that is going to come from these capillaries, uh, what will happen is at the tip of that sprout there will be one cell which is very specialised and is specialised to guide the sprout towards the angiogenic centre. This is known as the tip cell and there is only one. So firstly what you have to do is decide upon your tip cell basically. So we're going to say that these two are going to become our tip cells. So this one here is going to become a tip cell and this one here is going to become a tip cell. And it's going to be the ones that receive the biggest dose of vascular endothelial growth factor A. Okay, so how does vascular endothelial growth factor A affect uh, these endothelial cells? Well, basically the endothelial cells have a receptor that binds to vascular endothelial growth factor uh, A. Okay, and this receptor is known as the vascular endothelial growth factor VEGF receptor and it's the type 2 receptor. So this stands for the vascular endothelial growth factor. Okay, so that's again VEGF just stands for the vascular endothelial growth factor and then the R is for receptor and then it's the type 2 receptor that responds best to vascular endothelial growth factor A. Okay, so Basically, on the surface of these endothelial cells, you have the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2. And what this is going to cause is it's going to cause these cells which get the biggest dose to become tip cells. Now, basically, what's going to happen is they're going to become very specialized. They're going to create these structures which are called phylopodia. Okay? Uh, so... Let me just show you what a phylopodia is. So basically, if we have our endothelial cell here, so this is the endothelial cell we've uh, chosen to become our tip cell, and I will explain to you in a moment why only one becomes a tip cell. But basically, once it gets a large enough dose of vascular endothelial growth factor A, what will happen is it will produce these huge, great sort of processes, these protrusions, these long, thin protrusions um, that will protrude towards the angiogenic center, towards the source of vascular endothelial growth factor A. Okay? Like so. Okay, and these protrusions, these long, thin protrusions here, those are known as phylopodia. So we ha I've drawn four phylopodia, basically. Okay, so, um, and, I, and I've t written the plural, so I should have two arrows at least. Okay, so phylopodia. Now, uh, we'll discuss what the functions of these phylopodia are in a moment, uh, but for now I just want to explain to you why you only get one tip cell. Okay, so one of the functions of vascular endothelial growth factor A on the uh, endothelial cell that's going to become the tip cell is that it will produce these phylopodia, it's going to migrate towards the source of, of 
vascular endothelial growth factor A, but it's also going to stop its neighboring cells becoming tip cells. And the way it does this is that it puts a molecule onto its surface, basically. When vascular endothelial growth factor A binds to the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, uh, it induces uh, the cell that's got the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2 on its surface to put another molecule on its surface. And this other molecule is known as the delta-like ligand 4. Okay, so delta-like ligand 4. And for short, delta-like ligand 4 is abbreviated to DLL4. So the tip cell will put on its surface the delta-like ligand 4. Okay, so let's have this here. Um, so here it has delta-like ligand 4 on its surface. So I'll colour this in in blue. Okay, so there we have this delta-like ligand 4, and I'll label it up. And basically, uh, the surrounding neighbouring cells have a molecule on their surface which will bind to the delta-like ligand 4. Okay, so if I've got a normal old endothelial cell here that's maybe next to the tip cell, what will happen is it will have a molecule on its surface which binds to the delta-like ligand 4. Okay, so here's the delta-like ligand 4 on the surface of our tip cell, so I'll draw our tip cell with its phylopodia here. Okay, and uh, what will happen is when the delta-like ligand 4 binds to this receptor, this will cause these neighbouring cells to stop expressing vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, so they won't receive the same sort of activation as the tip cell, basically. Okay, so here is the delta-like ligand 4 in blue. And I haven't yet told you what this receptor for delta-like ligand 4 is. This is called the notch receptor. Okay, and all of the neighbouring endothelial cells will have the notch receptor on their surface. So I'll have the notch receptor in pink. Okay, and basically the notch receptor, once it's activated by the binding of the delta-like ligand 4, it will uh, cause a cascade which will act on the nucleus of this endothelial cell and stop the production of the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2. Okay, so now these cells will become insensitive to the vascular endothelial growth factor uh, ba A, basically. So they won't be induced to differentiate into tip cells like the tip cell has. So you'll only get one tip cell being produced. Okay, so we now need to talk about what the tip cell is actually going to do. So let's go over the page and draw what it's going to do. So we've got our capillary here. Okay, so I'll draw one side of the capillary here. So here's an endothelial cell. And neighbouring to it is this special endothelial cell that's become a tip cell, basically. So it's now got these phylopodia. Well, basically, what these phylopodia are going to do is they're going to secrete proteolytic enzymes. And they're also going to help this tip cell uh, to migrate towards uh, the uh, angiogenic centre. Okay, so... Firstly, uh, then, the phylopodia are going to be releasing proteolytic enzymes. Now, these proteolytic enzymes uh, will break down, uh, firstly, the basement membranes. Remember, the capillary had a basement membrane around the endothelial cells, which were trapping the endothelial cells in. The proteolytic enzymes that the tip cell is releasing will break down the basement membrane. So now the tip cell is free. And then past the basement membrane. The basement membrane isn't the only extracellular matrix. You know, in normal tissue, you have collagen and polysaccharides and all sorts making up a meshwork everywhere, okay? So your interstitial fluid is not just a viscous glute that you can move through freely. It's got wires everywhere, a meshwork everywhere. So this tip cell cannot move whilst all of those wires are blocking it. So not only does it need to break down the basement membrane, but it also needs to break down uh, the extracellular matrix if it's going to migrate towards the angiogenic centre over here. So here is the angiogenic centre. Okay, right. So what's going to happen is uh, the angiogenic centre will continue to release the vascular endothelial growth factor 
uh, A, okay, and the tip cell here has receptors for vascular endothelial growth factor A on its surface, and that's the other function of the thylopodia. They're absolutely covered in receptors for vascular endothelial growth factor A. They're covered in the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, so I might put this here. So here is the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, VEGFR2. Okay, so I'll cover that in in the distinguishable cover. Okay, so what's now going to happen is vascular endothelial growth factor A will come down and bind to the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, okay, on the tip cell, and it will cause the tip cell to migrate. And the tip cell's phylopodia will move towards the angiogenic centre and pull the whole tip cell towards that angiogenic centre. And the proteolytic enzymes that the phylopodia are releasing will then mean that there's nothing to obstruct the tip cell moving. Now, what's going to happen is the tip cell just going to move out and, you know, leave a hole in the side of the capillary here. We'll know is the answer. Basically, as the tip cell moves, what will happen is these cells will, won't move with it. Okay, so these cells aren't going to move. Let me colour them in. This red cell here and this red cell here, they're not going to move. But what they are going to do is they will proliferate, basically. So they will proliferate. And basically, as the tip cell moves out, they'll create new cells which will go with the tip cell and mean that there won't be a hole in the side of the um, capillary. Okay, so what's going to happen is, um, here is our red cell again, okay, like so. The tip cell might now have moved out a little bit further, okay, so here are its phylopodia again, like so. Here's its nucleus, and now what will have happened is these endothelial cells will proliferate so that there are cells to move out with at the tip cell, and I'm showing this slightly badly because I'm going to show it as though there's a lumen yet, uh, and there isn't a lumen at this point basically, so what will happen is the endothelial cells will be next to one another, there, there won't be a lumen in between them, so I'm trying to think how I can rectify this picture. Okay, so I'm going to have to make these cells much bigger than they are basically, well much bigger than I've drawn them so far. Okay, so here are these new endothelial cells which look hugely deformed. And I'm showing them like this because there isn't a lumen here yet. Okay, so here then is our original red endothelial cell here. Okay, and it's got a nucleus there. So I'll colour those what two in red again. Okay, so here's one. Okay, and I, I want to stress that those have not moved. The tip cell moves, but the endothelial cells don't move. They proliferate and produce cells that will go with the tip cell. Okay, and at the moment, there is no lumen in this sprout. Okay, so what we've got here at the moment is a sprout. Okay, so this is the beginning of our sprout. Okay, right, that's sprouting out from the capillary. And these endothelial cells here that are going with the tip cell, those are newly created, basically, by the division of the endothelial cells. Okay, so these blue endothelial cells that we have here, uh, these are what are known as the stalk cells, because they are the stalk of the sprout. So this is a stalk cell. Okay, and what's going to happen is the tip cell will continue to move towards the angiogenic centre. So it will continue to release proteolytic enzymes from its phylopodia, which will break down the extracellular matrix. And then the vascular endothelial growth factor A will continue to bind to the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2 on the surface of the phylopodia. And the tip cell will continue to navigate towards the angiogenic centre. And what will happen is these stalk cells now will continue to proliferate to make the stalk longer and longer and longer. So the next phase that you're going to get is stalk elongation. Okay, and then what's going to eventually happen is that um, these stalks will get closer and closer to the angiogenic centre. Okay, and we'll continue this video, in this discussion in the next video.